Now joining us is the former head of the British Army, Lord Richard Dannett. A very warm welcome back to the programme. Good to see you. Um, I just want to ask you about the latest comments that we're just receiving uh, from Downing Street. They have declined to comment on reports that this missile that hit Poland was fired by Ukrainian forces at an incoming Russian missile, saying the facts need to be established first. And that certainly seems to be very much the cautious approach of the West. But just how hard is it to establish the facts in all of this? Well, it is hard to establish the facts, and that is why our world leaders, quite rightly, are being cautious. What we absolutely need to avoid is this war escalating in any shape or form as a result of a miscalculation or a mistake. So the uh, intention to be cautious, the intention to investigate thoroughly is absolutely right. That said, one's got to put this in the widest background. Uh, at the time of this strike, uh, there was a major incoming Russian attack on Ukrainian infrastructure. So there were many Russian missiles incoming, if you like, to the West. There were also many Ukrainian anti-air missiles being fired. So there are several possibilities as to how this could have come about. Was it a Russian attack by mistake? Was it a deliberate Russian attack? Was it a Ukrainian a counter weapon, if you like, an air defense weapon that uh, itself went rogue? So there are. There are many possibilities here, and I think uh, world leaders are right, experts are right, to establish the facts to make sure that, for goodness sake, this war does not escalate as a result of miscalculation. Wasn't this always inevitable, Lord Dannett, the longer the conflict went on, that something like this would, 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 would happen, that the conflict would, would creep outside the borders of Ukraine? Well, yes, you're right. It was always possible that that might happen. But I think one has to look at, as well, to ask the question, why might something like this happen? And the, there's a very big difference between Russia deliberately attacking targets in Poland, and you could construct a rationale why they might do that. Uh, many, Most of the Western weapons that have come into Ukraine have come through Poland, so Russia could decide that they wanted to interrupt that supply line and make a deliberate attack. That would be a serious measure. That would be an attack on Poland. That would be, under Article 5, a, an attack on all member states of NATO. Or alternatively, you've got the, the error theory that, um, just as we've seen yesterday, possibly a Russian missile that went rogue, possibly Ukrainian anti-aircraft missile that went rogue. Um, so there is a, there are options whereby there could be a deliberate escalation by the Russians, or there are options whereby it could be a mistake. But in any event, Western leaders need to be very cautious, very careful, not to uh, jump to conclusions and risk escalating the war by miscalculation. Isn't there a danger, though, that in being extremely cautious and, you know, understandably so, that actually they embolden Russia, that they will be watched so closely and will be seen to not be, act, you know, not to be acting decisively uh, and astutely in all of this, that they could be giving Russia licence to have accidental incursions into other neighbouring areas? Uh, yes, Isabel, of course, you're, you're absolutely right. But again, this is where balance has to be struck. Um, and, the and decisions on balance can only be taken once the facts have been established. And it is really important to establish the facts. And technical experts today will be able to do that, to look at the trajectory, uh, to look at where the impact was, look at what debris they can find, uh, analyse who made it. And, and, and many other questions can be asked and hopefully answered during the course of today. Yes, and if it was proven that it was a deliberate Russian attack, then you're absolutely right. Uh, the West, NATO, has to make a decisive response. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a kinetic response. Under Article 4, there can be a request for urgent talks between Poland, the country that was attacked, and Russia, who it might be believed was the perpetrator of it. But as I've already said, and other people are saying, it is conceivable that this attack was carried out or was not carried out, was, a, was an accident as a result of a Ukrainian missile, anti-aircraft missile, going rogue itself and tragically killing uh, two Polish people on the ground. If, if, it, if it is proven to be an accident, um, then d what happens next? Do we just say, well, you know, accidents happen, this conflict's been going on for a while, and then we move on? Well, um, if it was proven to be an accident, and if it was proven that it was a Ukrainian anti-aircraft missile, then Ukraine has got to make some kind of response uh, in compensation, if you like, uh, to, to Poland. Um, 
to civilians as we understand it were killed. Uh, they've got families, they've got livelihoods, they've got lives that were cut off. So it would not be inappropriate for Ukraine to make a, a fairly fulsome apology and offer some full compensation. Um, and, and itself be even more careful about where it targets its anti-aircraft missiles. I mean, you can't blame the Ukrainians for firing many anti-aircraft missiles at the large number of incoming Russian missiles. Um, after all, we all know mm. that uh, hundreds, thousands of Ukrainian civilians have been killed. Uh, major elements of Ukraine's core national infrastructure particularly power systems, have been destroyed in recent weeks. So this is a, a major response by the Ukrainians to a devastating attack uh, on Ukraine itself by Russia. So it, I'm afraid the reality is that in a conflict like this, there are going to be accidents, there are going to be mistakes. But come right back to where we were at the start of this conversation, it's really, really important to establish the facts before judgments are made and decisions are taken. Uh, of course, if the nuclear option, and I mean that literally, um, is established that this wasn't an accident or that this was Russian handling, you'll know there'll be British forces, British forces families up and down the country very closely watching this this morning, what it might mean for the United Kingdom. Because, of course, if it is proven to have been an attack on a NATO country, it will mean boots on the ground for us, won't it? Um, I think that's going a leap too far too soon, Isabel. Um, I really come back to where we were before. Um, we can speculate as much as we like about what the response might be, but let's first of all establish the facts and work out and find out what the cause of this explosion was and the reason behind the two people uh, losing their lives. Um, I think it's, even if it was decided that this was a Russian attack uh, and believed that it was a deliberate Russian attack, it doesn't. It's a, it's a big leap to say there'll be British boots on the ground. It doesn't, it doesn't follow that way. There okay. needs to be a, a measured uh, rise up the escalatory ladder um, and boots on the ground implying uh, a NATO uh, deployment into Ukraine, the NATO troops fighting on behalf of Ukraine against Russian soldiers. I mean, there's many, many leaps up the ladder before we get that far. Yeah. I think you're, right, you're, you're not wrong to ask the question, but actually it's not the right question at this time. Okay, Lord Richard Dannett, always good to get your views. We really appreciate you coming on the programme. Thank you very much.